Hello again everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks and we've got a build to share with you. Um, we've called it a, a lightning build because we kind of knocked this out in uh, two days here at the shop because we are under a strict deadline for the individuals who commissioned us to put it together for them. Uh, fortunately, the build went very smoothly and we were very lucky that the boat performed flawlessly during its maiden voyage. So uh, this really was a lightning build. I'm gonna share with you what it is, how it works, and then take you to the pond. So what you have before you is a uh, British Trafalgar class submarine. This kit was originally put out by OTW out of the UK. Now this hull found its way to me through an estate sale and there was some work done to it. Now the sail was missing, these slots were all kind of milled out, and the pump jet was mounted to the back. But other than that, there was no work done to the boat. We had a cylinder that just happened to work really well in the boat, so uh, we paired it up and we had, uh, got it all put together in record time. Uh, we 3D printed this sail just as a, as a simple mock-up of the Trafalgar sail. Um, but basically everything else is kind of as it came from OTW. We got cast resin appendages, uh, a beautiful metal pump jet in the back and a, and a beautiful bronze impeller that goes on the inside. Um, the cylinder that we're looking at here, now this was actually scratch built by a gentleman by the name of Dwayne Hill out of Canada. And you've seen some of his builds run through the shop here before and you've seen other of the cylinders used in projects as well. Let's take a quick look at it here. Uh, we'll start at the stern end and we'll kind of move our way forward. These are uh, magnetic connectors. They run through a cup seal and then into the cylinder to these uh, full-sized servos. We have a new electronic speed controller that we put in there. That's a 25 amp um, electronic speed controller. We got the receiver. This is a JR radio set that we're using. It is actually a six channel radio, but we're only using four channels for this particular build. We have a, a battery eliminator unit here that takes the onboard 11.1 .1 volts and converts it to five volts to power the receiver. Then on the other side, we've got an automatic pitch controller right there that helps maintain uh, pitch. And then underneath, you can certainly see the uh, main drive motor right there. Moving forward, we've got the ballast servo, and that moves this linkage forward and back. I'm going to show you a little bit more about how this works um, a little bit later on once it's in the boat. But uh, this is the vent unit right here. Uh, an onboard pressure vessel for the gas backup system. Our main drive uh, battery here, this is a lithium polymer battery pack. Made a little 3D printed bracket that goes in there, keeps the battery uh, separated and stable inside. And we've got our air pump, which is the primary um, way to blow the ballast tank. And then last and not least, we've got a forward servo that uh, powers our forward dive planes. So Dwayne does an excellent job putting these together. This is a very robust cylinder and it actually works really, really well. We'll take a quick look at the inside of the boat. Now to get access, uh, it's a very easy process. There's just this thumb screw that goes in the back. Um, you just unscrew that, pick it up at the back, and then slide it forward. And we've got access to the interior of the boat. Linkage for the forward dive planes. All of the ballast weight that we go in, we put in here to make this uh, a very stable boat. And then in the back, we've got all of our linkages for our rudders, for our dive planes, and then the, uh, the drive shaft coupler for that impeller. And you can just see that beautiful work in the back there. Um, this thing works really, really well. It pushes a lot of water. This is a fast boat. 
Now that you've had kind of an overview of the boat, let's talk about installation of the cylinder. And it's very, very easy. We're just going to uh, grab our cylinder here. Um, a couple of things that I didn't talk about that I probably should have. This hose right here is the intake for the air pump for the ballast system. I'm going to show you that in a moment, how that gets hooked up to the intake in the top of the tower. But on the other side, we've got this, and this forms a dual purpose. Uh, if you've looked at my videos before, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't yet, uh, the receiver antenna runs through the inside here. So the idea is you put the cylinder in place and then run that down the length of the boat. You get maximum reception for your radio. The other thing that you can do, which is very, very important, you can unplug the end of this hose and use it as a test hose. So before every run, you'll seal up your cylinder, put it in a bathtub or a test tank, uncap the end, blow into the tube and look for bubbles. Uh, if you see bubbles, obviously there's a potential leak situation there. You can address it before it becomes a critical situation when your boat is in the middle of a pond, which is not a good thing. We're gonna grab our dog bone connector here and put it into the dog bone adapter. Drop the cylinder down, and if you look inside the ballast tank, there's a little pin in there, and that's just going to slip. Oh, it came uncoupled in the back here. Let's try that again. A little pin, and it just goes into the hole in the ballast tank. That does a couple of things. It stops the cylinder from moving forward and back and from twisting. Now that that's in place, we're gonna make up our linkage. Click and click. It's as easy as that in the front. This little hook goes into the second hole. And just uh, the tension on that keeps it locked into place. Now is the trickiest part in this whole scenario. Uh, we're using some heavy duty elastic bands to lock the cylinder down. So as I mentioned, it can't move forward and back, it can't spin, but it can lift off. And a lot of the buoyancy of this boat comes from the cylinder. So you need to make sure it's held down. And to help with that, we created this fancy uh, tool out of a piece of brass rod. And all we're gonna do is uh, hook it on here and there's some little brass pins on the inside here that just slips over those little brass pins and we've got the back or the sorry the front we'll do the same thing at the back this actually um, works really quickly once you get the hang of it and we've taken this in and out a number of times and so we uh, we got pretty good at it so now that cylinder is in place, I can lift up the whole boat by the cylinder. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this hose, I'm just gonna slip it under that elastic band. It's gonna keep things nice and tidy inside, nothing sloppy or get pinched when we go to put the uh, hull on. We're gonna take our antenna, run that down the inside so that's down the whole length of the boat now. Now that that's done, we just simply move on to installation of the upper hull. Now that we have the cylinder installed, all of the linkages connected, we are gonna do a test of all the functions, which you're gonna to want to do before every run. Obviously, you wanna check and make sure it's working before you go to the effort of going to the pond. So, um, transmitter always goes on first. We've got good voltage. Turn the cylinder on with the fob. We're looking for uh, some indicator lights here. We got power to the electronic speed controller and the, uh, the pitch controller did cycle through its power on uh, self-test as well. So uh, let's check the functions here one at a time. We'll start with the rudder. Now the rudder is connected to channel one, which is the uh, horizontal right stick there. Dive planes, uh, channel two, which is the vertical right stick. And that's working both in the back and in the front. On the other side, we've got throttle. We'll check our forward throttle. Yeah. 
and reverse. Now that movement of the rear dive planes is completely normal. It's because that electronic um, pitch controller is uh, very sensitive to vibration. It's got a very sensitive accelerometer inside. It just picks up the vibration. When you get it in the water, that goes away. Last thing is the uh, ballast system, and that's the horizontal on the left stick. Now to dive, you're gonna go all the way to the right. And the way this works, this is actually a four position ballast system. So it's in neutral right now, that's position one. In position two, which is vents, that's all the way to the right, you can see this little sloped block pushes up on the bottom of the valve and then the vent opens up. Actually works really well. You go the other way, if you go halfway to the left, that kicks on the air pump. So you're gonna use this if it's just a standard um, surfacing cycle. And what that does, we'll just turn this on here. So that's about halfway. And the way that works, there's a little switch right here on the servo. You can see it gets depressed. And that's what kicks the air pump on. So the only time that's really gonna work is when the intake for the pump is above the surface of the water, which it is going to be at 95% of the time that you're operating the boat. Now, if you're in a situation where you get um, deep and, uh, or the intake for the pump is below the surface of the water, that is when you're gonna engage the gas backup system. And that is a full deflection all the way to the left. That's blowing out the ballast tank. That's completely independent of surface air. Um, all of your, your backup air is inside there. And this is a big tank actually. So you've got a lot of cycles worth of air uh, inside that tank. But of course you wanna make sure that you charge it between every run. And actually what we're, we're gonna do here, we're gonna show you the charging procedure for that right now. So the fill procedure is pretty easy. It is a little bit tricky with one person, um, but it is doable. So you're gonna take your can. Now this is uh, AC refrigerant, R134A. Uh, that's what we're using here. You can also use Propel, which is an airbrush propellant. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and set that on top of the valve, press down really hard. So that's down there um, right now. My valve's a little leaky, which is why that was spraying out. And then we're gonna open up the, uh, the valve. And then you're going to cycle the gas ballast system. And you're gonna hear a change in the pitch as that fills up. The reason we're doing this is there's refrigerant flowing in there, but it's being kind of uh, blocked by the air that's in that cylinder. So we wanna have a chance to vent the air out the top and uh, have the liquid go in. I'm gonna do that once, I'm gonna do it twice. All right, so at this point, it is all filled with liquid. That's as much liquid as we're gonna be able to get into that cylinder. It's fully charged and ready to go. So the last thing that we're gonna to wanna to do, obviously, is button the boat up ready for the pond. Uh, not much left to do in that regard. Just gonna connect the air hose to the intake. That's done, nice and easy. Slip the bottom of the upper hull over this lower lip here. I'm gonna pull this ahead just a little bit. There we go. So that goes over and we're just gonna make sure that our uh, alignment pins aren't uh, missing their slots. That goes down, push it back a little bit. We're gonna grab our little hold down. This is just a thumb screw, it goes on really easily torquing it down, and now we're done. The boat's completely buttoned up, the top hull can't come off, and we are ready for the pond. Now we've got the uh, main power still hooked up to the remote fob switch, so right now even though 
This boat is off right now. We can turn it on and off with that remote fob so we can just throw this in the vehicle, go to the pond, power it right up, do a quick test, and we're off to the races. Well, there you go, everyone. This was our lightning build for Trafalgar class submarine kit that was put out by OTW out of the UK. I hope you enjoyed it. We're gonna leave you with some footage of the boat performing at a very soupy pond and uh, you'll see just how good of a performer this boat was. It was a ton of fun to drive. I think the new owners are gonna have a blast with it. So uh, leaving you with that, if you like what you see in these videos, I do ask you to like and subscribe. It helps us out here a lot. If you have comments or questions, you can email me anytime, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. And with that, we're gonna let you go. Thanks for joining us and We'll catch you next time.